Welcome to My Bible Thoughts with Pastor Rich. This is episode number 29, and this is a time where I read a section of scripture and give you my thoughts on God's Word. Today's Bible study is going to be around 8 minutes, and you can use this as a reflection time to draw near and commune with God. I'm Pastor Rich. Thanks so much for being here with me. My Bible verses for today are Acts chapter 13, verses 1 through 13, and I read from the NASB translation of the Bible. In our last episode, we learned that the book of Acts documents the progression of the early church, and that the work of God is moving forward. No one can stop it, and it's foolish to try to do so. And my main point today is that it's often best to start evangelizing to those who are closest to you, where your light shines brightest. Listen as I start reading in verse 1. Now there were prophets and teachers at Antioch in the church that was there, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were serving the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set Barnabas and Paul apart for me for the work to which I have called them. Then when they had fasted, prayed, and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they reached Salamis, they began to proclaim the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they also had John as their helper. When they had gone through the whole island of Paphos, they found a magician, a Jewish false prophet whose name was Bar-Jesus, who was the proconsul Sergius Paulus, a man of intelligence. This man summoned Barnabas and Paul and sought to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the magician, for so his name is translated, was opposing them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from faith. But Saul, who was also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, stared at him and said, You who are full of deceit and fraud, you are the son of the devil. You are the enemy of all righteousness. Will you not stop making crooked at the straight ways of the Lord? Now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you will be blind and not see the sun for a time. And immediately a mist and a darkness fell upon him, and he went about seeking those who would lead him by the hand. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had happened, being amazed at the teaching of the Lord. So the early church started out in Jerusalem when Pentecost came, and of course it spread out from there. But at this point, the church was still very Jewish. Now, we had seen the Roman Cornelius come to faith, but there's still kind of a Jewish flavor to it all. How did this church become more universal, since it is for everybody? Here we see prophets and teachers in the church in Antioch. They received new revelations from God. So Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius, Manion, and Saul. So that's quite a mixture and diversity. They are ministering and seeking God with praise and fasting, and as they do so, the Holy Spirit speaks to them. Continue to evangelize to the Gentiles. So in verse 3, we see that they are commissioned, they have hands laid upon them, and when hands are laid upon them, this means the church is giving them the, the spiritual support as they are sent. This is kind of the first point where we see the church is willing to take the gospel to every ends of the earth, and they're taking this serious. This is a great movement of God. Everyone must hear the gospel. As the story progresses, then they go to Cyprus. We see that in verses 4 through 12. They arrive in Salamis, and Cyprus means copper because there's copper mines there in this region. Paul and Barnabas preach in the synagogues. They preach the word of God to the whole of the island. Most historians believe that they spend about two months on this island. And at this point, things change in verse 9. Paul mixes among the Roman officials. He's the leader of the mission from this point forward. And I think that's why we see the name switch from Saul to Paul, his Gentile name. We see a Jew that's a wizard that claims to speak in God's name, and he is losing influence with the Romans. He tries to turn away Paul and his party. Paul calls him out and calls him the son of the devil. Then we see this man is blinded, and the Romans then believe what Paul is saying when they saw what is done. 
It was a combination of a miracle and the teaching of the Lord that brought this Roman man to faith. We see a Roman official converted. Now, I believe they started in Cyprus because that is where Barnabas is from. We should always start evangelizing where people know us best. In fact, the church in Antioch had been brought into being by Jewish men from Cyprus. So I think that's why this church has concern for the people there and they, why they helped commission this party to go there. They had concern for their homeland. And I think you must always be willing to tell someone that's closest to you. Those are my thoughts on Acts chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. In our next episode, we will begin in verse 14. Now, on this podcast, the Word of God is lifted as the authoritative, real, and accurate Word straight from God. But I also want to put an equal importance on prayer time. I want to encourage you to pray along with me, no matter where you're listening to this recording. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this early church. Thank you that it was a commissioning church. Father, thank you that this church is for everyone, everywhere, even today, that no one is left behind that truly wants to know you. Father, as we go through the book of Acts, convict us and teach us. Give us bravery to speak this truth as we learn it to everyone, no matter what the consequence. And Father, may we never forget that Christ is very much alive today when we speak this truth. He's watching and he's waiting for us in glory. Dear Lord, we thank you for your word that it is all sufficient. Nothing else is required to be convinced of our sin and receive salvation. That we might testify you for your glory. Give us bravery, courage, love enough to testify to anyone who will listen. My prayer today, Lord, is that if there's anyone listening that does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that the conviction of the Holy Spirit work on them. And as we depart for today, Lord, may none of us forget your Holy Son, who died for our sins, and now sits at your right hand, very much alive and in glory. Amen. So that's episode 29, going verse by verse through the book of Acts. And if you haven't listened to the rest of the book, I suggest you start in episode number one and you work your way through with me. I pray that this study is edifying for you. And if you'd like to join a community of like-minded Christians, then I suggest you look in the show notes below where I have listed links to both my Facebook group and my Twitter page. I want to take this time to thank you for following me as part of your podcast routine. Thank you and have a great day.